Would you like to see how to tie an easier soft shackle using an overhand knot instead of the button knot? Stay till the end because we're gonna break test what we make in this episode of How Not to Highline. Hi, I'm Ryan Jinks and welcome to my gear room. Go to hownottohighline.com if you wanna learn how to bolt or how to highline. And today we're going to cover in this episode how to tie an overhand knot on a soft shackle versus the button knot soft shackles that I've always promoted on this channel. Now they're both super good enough. We're going to break test these at the end to see how they break and what strength they break at. Basically, you don't want the noose that goes over the head to slip off. And what makes these bomber is the fact that the head is so big, it's not going to slip off. Now, you're not supposed to put knots in Dyneema because it reduces the strength. So if I took this soft shackle and put a knot in it, that's going to reduce the strength. If I try to tie two ends of Dyneema together, it's very slippery material and that will literally slip out before it breaks. Knots are bad. However, in this video, we're gonna show you why that's not the case and how to make an easier soft shackle if you just don't like doing the button knot. Now, we do promote the button knot for a couple reasons on this channel, but also it's kind of the hazing process. If you're a new highliner and trying to get into the gear, you should suffer a little bit making your own stuff and uh, really get to earn that highlining badge. However, for anchors, you can do these. They're way simpler, and then you don't have to wonder if you're not as right, because when you're highlining, you don't want to wonder if you're going to die. So let's get started. Michael Melner is going to show us how he makes his soft shackles that he's used for years. Hi, I'm Michael Melner, and the reason I like the big overhand soft shackle <laughs> is because they're really, really easy to inspect. Um, when I got started and I was tying the button knots, I couldn't tell if I had made a mistake or not. So I started tying these. Um, they say they could be about 3% stronger, but I'm not sure enough testing has been done to really confirm that. Um, maybe we'll find out later today. Um, so right here, I have all of my supplies gathered. I have my splicers. Now these are D splicers. You don't have to use these. You can use a piece of wire, a piece of copper wire, a coat hanger, kind of whatever you have around the house, but um, something in this shape, this big U shape, I found helps a lot, and you'll see why in a few minutes. I got a sharp paring knife uh, and duct tape. So we'll go ahead and get started with our six mil soft shackle. So first I'm going to measure out length. For this purpose, I'll just probably do an arm's length. Then I'll take my duct tape where I'm going to cut. Why do you use duct tape? It makes it easier to cut because you can, if you can wrap the tape really tight, tightly, it keeps all the strands together. See, with it wrapped that tightly, it cuts through like butter. This stuff can be kind of difficult to cut. So once I have my two ends, I like to go ahead and taper my ends. It's like the most tedious part of making the shackle, so I like to get it over with first. Now, since this is 12 strand, I'm going to take two strands about each inch and try and pick them to where they're together. So I try and pick a spot where there's two coming out together like that. Cut about an inch off. It's harder when it's not taped. Go about two inches down, same thing. Picking strands that I haven't already cut. We'll do that same thing to the other end. All right, so now that they're both tapered, uh, we are going to make our eyelet. This is going to be the little noose guy that goes around the knot, making sure my ends are even. I like to use the Sharpie for to measure because you don't want to make your eyelet too big. And then I will mark where I'm feeding through through our am steel making sure that there's six strands on either side so let's count them one two three four five so i think i need to go one more one two three four five six one two three four five six the cool thing about these d splicers 
is that you can feed your am seal through. It'll pinch down at the top. Pull through. So just to make sure the we measured our eyelet correctly, I'm going to put both ends even. Pull it straight. Make sure I like that eyelet size. That looks great. What we're basically going to do is we're going to take each one of these strands and feed it back through itself to create little loops on both ends. I'm actually going to go from the end of the taper just to give us a little bit of extra room. Okay, so in order to make an eyelet that's about this size, like so, we're going to splice this through. So this rope is going to be inside of this strand. But you can't just go this same distance and feed through because as we splice it through, it's going to scrunch up the rope that we're splicing through and take up more space. So we're going to want to come further up than the distance that we measured. So I like to start way up here just to be sure. The cool thing about these D splicers is that you can just keep scrunching on these things and go further than the distance that you measured. So right where we where our mark is, we're going to come out. I like to push as much as I can down because I can pull these ends apart. It's really important not to pinch the full diameter of the rope because it'll make it really, really difficult to pull it back through. So I like to pinch uh, maybe a couple of the ends that are tapered so that we have, so that when it folds over itself to come back through, it feeds back through easier. At first, I made a lot of mistakes and I would, this would pop off while it's inside the rope. It's really easy to pull it back out and start over again. Once we're through, we remove our pinch, check our eyelet. I, I like to leave a smaller eyelet while I'm doing this part, and then I can adjust it once it's flat. But so I'll So here we have an incredibly small eyelet. I'm just going to adjust that just a little bit. So we're going to basically do that to the exact same thing to the other side. Okay, so now that we have our two eyes, uh, the hardest part's done. Making sure we keep them directly in line, we're going to tie an overhand knot. Now it's really important that this overhand knot is perfect. See that our strands aren't crossing. They're completely in line, wrapping around each other. And before you make this really, really tight, we're gonna make sure that we did everything correctly. So we'll take our noose and we'll feed it through both of our eyelets. And the way that I, because sometimes when you're first starting to make these, you're not sure, do I feed it through this way or this way? What I found is that the there's a natural bend in the in the rope after you tie the overhand and you just want to wrap it around and follow that bend. So almost like completing that, that triangle, if that makes sense. We have these two angles and we're just going to come through here. And this is a great example of when you haven't left enough space. The, these need to sit directly up against the knot. So I'm going to come back out. <laughs> So after we've adjusted our knot, we'll try again. What we should be left with is this big giant overhand knot. So I'll come back out. Now that I like that, I like the length. This, so when, when you're feeding it back through, these should be tight against the knot without a lot of extra space. So it might take a few times. So you can back out and just until you get it right. But once you get it right, you can undo it again and really tighten down that overhand. Does the overhand naturally tighten itself once you start using it? Absolutely. 
You just want it to sit fa uh, proper right. when you start. Yeah, it, these things get hard as a rock after rigging on them a couple times. Okay. That looks pretty nice and even. No extras. That one sits on top of that one. That's normal, right? Yep. Since the, the, the knot is so large, I just like to make sure that I've left myself enough room to get it around the knot. It kind of equalizes itself. Now it's important to note that I made a smaller one than I usually do for demonstration purposes. This is pretty much a perfect four inch soft shackle out of about six feet. But as you noticed, it's going to take a lot of space to get over that knot. So I like to make them a little bit larger because we're only left with about that. So this is a 12 inch ruler and you can see the size of this one he just made and this longer one that he uses. Now he takes, this is one inch tubular, right? Yes. To, to pad his um, soft shackle, which can be beneficial for the life of your soft shackle, but if something's gonna cut through this, it's gonna cut, cut through this. So you still have to be mindful of how you're using these. Where, how, where's your berry on this guy? Is like- Wait, this, it's a little bit closer than I usually like. Um, so the berry stops right here, and where's the berry on this guy? stops right here okay so it's not a problem it's actually better if this berry was maybe down in here more absolutely but i do think this is going to be plenty strong because the berry is all tied up in this literally so should we uh, make a five millimeter and then yep. go brake test it keep in mind this one took six feet of am steel to make whereas this guy only took four so it does take a bit more am steel to use the big overhand. So I just made a five millimeter because we want to test both. And um, what I did was pretty much everything as you just saw, but what you can see here is my tails were too long here. And so you can actually get, um, I can almost get the pin in there while it's sitting flush right here. So I have to retie this knot to get a little higher and then uh, to get it to sit tight. because so we want this knot to be rock hard when we're done. Mel has also made bracelets. This is 764ths, and uh, we did actually brake test one of these uh, before that he gave me, just to see how strong it was. It was like 3,000 something pounds. We'll put that in the video here as well. But uh, I'm gonna fix this, and we're gonna go to the garage and start to brake stuff on our slack sat machine. <laughs> Okay, so pretty strong. Oh, dude, it didn't break at the noose. Whoa, look how weird. Look how weird this looks now. It is all messed up. But it, it usually, it's supposed to break in like the noose right here. That's where all the other um, button knot soft shackles break. But it looks like it broke at the taper. Or what I should say is, I cheated and didn't exactly taper like I should. Maybe we can make another episode. Put in the comments below if you want to see me find out how much the taper makes a difference. But like, we just wanted a general idea. The consensus is 49.75 kilonewtons. And if you don't know what that is in English, it's 10,900 pounds. Fun fact. That's the working load limit of my dyno here, so we have to eliminate this in order to break our next soft shackle. This knot actually looks better. That looks still looks nice and pretty hard. It broke in the noose because Mel tapered uh, the things like he was supposed to. And it broke at 14,450 pounds of force or about 64 kilonewtons. So that's pretty impressive how strong these things are. And this uh, 764 one was about 3,600 pounds of force or 16 kilonewtons, if I'm not mistaken, which is also pretty impressive, but obviously we don't highlight on something like that. We definitely aim to have a three to one or a five to one safety ratio whenever we are climbing or highlining. These are not practical in the climbing community. Um, I can't think about where you would want these. It's nice in highlining because you have a, like a static anchor that's set for the whole time. I don't think anybody wants to carry these up 
and climb with them. Put in the comments below where we could use soft shackles in climbing. I know that climbing slings, like shoulder length slings, are made out of Dyneema and some other products. A lot of slings that go on cams now to make them lighter are also this material, but sewn in the skinny Dyneema slings like you see. We've done quite a few brake tests on that. Make sure you check out our other videos on mammoth slings and quad anchor slings and all sorts of stuff that we've done.